Radio Netherlands Worldwide (RNW), Dutch Radio Nederland Wereldomroep, was a public radio and television network based in Hilversum, producing and transmitting programs for international audiences outside the Netherlands. Radio Netherlands Worldwide also distributed content via web and email technology from as early as 1992. Its services in Dutch ended on the 10th of May 2012. English and Indonesian languages ceased on 29 June 2012 due to steep budgets cuts imposed by the Dutch government and a concomitant change in focus. The last program broadcast on shortwave was a daily half-hour show in Spanish for Cuba named El Toque the Touch on 1 August 2014. Due to government directives, the service implemented a new mandate in 2013 to promote free speech. In 2017, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs altered the organization's mission, cut the budget by nearly half and made 70% of the staff redundant. RNW Media now works to build digital communities for social change. History Broadcasting to the Dutch Colonial Empire by Philips Radio Following a series of experiments on various wavelengths in 1925, reports of good reception from a low-power shortwave transmitter were received from Jakarta on of March 11, 1927. Dutch Queen Wilhelmina made what is believed to be the world's first royal broadcast on 1 June 1927, addressing compatriots in the East and West Indies. Regular international broadcast transmissions started shortly afterwards from the Philips shortwave transmitter in Eindhoven. They used the callsign PHOHI for broadcasts in the Dutch language to the Dutch East Indies, now Indonesia, and PCJJ for broadcasts in English and Dutch to the rest of the world. The Philips company in Eindhoven saw a market for its radios in the Dutch colonies. Their research labs got support from companies who were trading goods between the Netherlands and Batavia now Indonesia. The PHOHI was officially founded on 18 June 1927. In 1928, test transmissions commenced from a site in Housen, Nord Holland. It was chosen because of the high water table on the land near the Zuidese Lake now Guamir. This meant there was a good conductivity for an efficient earth, which lead to stronger signals in the target areas. Around 1929, the Philips call sign was simplified to PCJ. There were several pre-war technical innovations. The research laboratories continued with the development of new transmitters that could operate at shorter wavelengths and could be retuned for broadcasts to different parts of the world. By the end of 1936, the power had been raised by connecting a stage with two water-cooled Type Tar 2250th valves. This provided a power output of 60 kW at a frequency of 15,220 kHz and immediately became the strongest short-wave transmitter in Europe. In 1937, this transmitter was moved from Eindhoven to the PHOHI transmitter park in Hausen. Broadcasts were considerably improved in 1937 with the construction of beam antennas supported by the world's first wooden antenna masts rotatable on two concentric circular rails at the transmitter site in Hausen. In November 2006, a one-fifth size model of this antenna was officially inaugurated on a roundabout a few hundred meters from the original site. Rotatable curtain array antennas were not in common use until the 1960s, so PCJ was far ahead of its time with its introduction of rotatable hours type antennas. <laughs> <laughs> Dutch broadcasting in exile Broadcasts from the Netherlands were interrupted by the German invasion in May 1940. There were three transmitters in operation at that time. On the afternoon of May 14, the Dutch military commander gave orders that the transmitters should be destroyed, to prevent them falling into the hands of the Nazis. After several attempts, which included calling in the help of the Hilversum Fire Brigade, two of the three transmitters were completely destroyed. The third was only partially damaged and later used by the Germans for pro-Nazi broadcasts, some originating from Germany. 
There were also relays of music concerts from Dutch broadcasters operating under German control. The Dutch government in exile was granted airtime on BBC transmitters in 1941. The programme Radio Aranya was a daily commentary on the Dutch situation both in the Netherlands and the rest of the Empire, Dutch East and West Indies. One of the chief commentators on Radio Aranya, Henk van den Broek, was given the task of restarting public broadcasting once the country was liberated. On 3 October 1944, van den Broek travelled from London to a liberated Eindhoven and began broadcasts as Radio Herigend Nederland. Topic. Birth of Radio Netherlands Worldwide On 24 May 1945, a programme for Dutch people living abroad was transmitted with the help of the BBC. In July 1945, the Dutch government founded the Stichting Radio Nederland in Den Overgangstijd Radio Netherlands in Time of Transition and gave it the mandate for both domestic and international broadcasts. Later, under pressure from the pre-war Dutch broadcasting companies, the government decided to separate national and international broadcasting. On 15 April 1947, the Stichting Radio Nederland Wereldomrope Radio Netherlands International Foundation was established. Broadcasts in Dutch, Indonesian, English and Spanish began in that year. Subsequently, language services in Arabic and Afrikaans 1949, French 1969 and Brazilian Portuguese 1974 were added during its entire broadcast history. Radio Netherlands Worldwide was always editorially independent from the Dutch government, being funded as around 6% of the public allocation for public broadcasting. The interval signal of Radio Netherlands was a version of the 80 Years War song Merk Toch Ho Sterk played on a carillion. The original recording was made at the cathedral in Den Bosch. It was replaced in August 1987 by a recording of the carillion in Breda. <laughs> End of radio broadcasts The English language shortwave broadcasts to North America were discontinued on the 26th of October 2008 due to a survey that claimed that more listeners listened to RNW podcasts than listened on shortwave radio. On the 24th of June 2011, the Dutch government announced a 70% cut to RNW's budget, reducing it from 46 million euros to 14 million. On the 11th of May 2012 at 2200 CEST, the Dutch service signed off at the end of a 24-hour radio marathon broadcast. This included several interviews with past staff members of the station, including the former Director General Lodewijk Buwens. And on 29 June 2012, Radio Netherlands ended broadcasting in English at 2057 Greenwich Mean Time after a similar celebratory 24-hour broadcast. Interviews with the host Jonathan Gruber who signed off for the last time have been posted by Jonathan Marks, the former Radio Netherlands program director 1992 to 2003 and host of Media Network since 2013. RNW has been funded by the Dutch Foreign Ministry rather than the Education and Culture Ministry. Topic: <laughs> Shortwave relay stations. The shortwave international broadcasts were heard worldwide via broadcast facilities in Bonaire opened in 1969 and Madagascar opened in 1972. The last transmission from the shortwave relay station in Bonaire ended at 1.57 Greenwich Mean Time on June 30, 2012, and the installations were later dismantled later that year. Radio Netherlands Worldwide used a shortwave station in Flevoland from 1985 to 2007. The shortwave transmissions were supplemented by an extensive network of partner stations. Topic: Languages. Topic: Programming on the English service. The English language output included news and current affairs, as well as documentaries and programmes about the Netherlands, Europe, culture, music, the media and international affairs. 
The station developed a reputation for providing unique, objective and high-quality public radio, garnering dozens of international awards for its productions. When the station closed down, the extensive English-language multimedia archives were deleted, but a group of former employees has made hundreds of these programs available again. The X Jukebox was a media show that ran from 1961 with Harry Van Gelder 1911 to 2003 and Jim Vastenhood through to 7 May 1981, when the name and format was changed to Media Network. Jonathan Marks took over in August 1980 and relaunched the show less than one year later by adding news, topical features. He produced over 1,000 editions of the program. It became a full-time website, weblog in October 2000. The blog was discontinued in 2012 as a result of budget cuts. The Media Network archive containing around 300 of the broadcasts is available online. Happy Station Show was another long running popular radio show, originating on the network's predecessors in 1928 and continued until 1995. See also List of radio stations in the Netherlands